What in the world is going on in the Boise real estate market? Well, a lot's going on and it's ever changing. So stay tuned and I'll give you that current market update. Oh, I told you I'd take you boating. So we'll do some of that too. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, this is Sean Tomich with the Living in Boise Group and if this is your first time to the channel, well then this is the part of the video where everybody gives the same scripted line and it goes like this. If this is your first time to the channel, then tap that bell and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Boring. Anyway, listen, like the video. We're doing pretty good. Uh, my goal is a thousand subscribers. 957 as of today, so we're really close. So the other thing though is you're gonna have to tell me what you want me to do when we get to a thousand. Um, skydiving, um, all right. So we do have a skydive area here, but let's not put that out there yet. It is something I wanna do, but not quite yet. So, um, but throw something out there. Give me some ideas of what you wanna see me do when we get to a thousand subscribers. Um, uh, outdoorsy thing, backpacking, like, like what do you want to see? Tell me what you want to see. Um, as you know, I, I actually read your comments and I like to give you what you're looking for. So, but throw out some suggestions and let's have some fun with it. Um, oh, hey, this is a, a party trick I learned a long time ago. This is the Boise phone book that came in the mail or came, yeah, came in the mail. Uh, it used to be a lot bigger when people advertise in the phone book, but um, but this is an old party trick that I, I learned. Let's see if we can do it on camera, ready? Ah, so it, it used to be more impressive when the phone book was you know like four times as big, but anyway, so that's probably worth a like, right? So give me a like, and don't forget, call me, email me, text me, days, nights, weekends, myself, my team, we've got your back when it comes to moving to the Boise, Treasure Valley, everywhere around here. So like I said, we've got your back. So there's a lot to unpack here when it comes to what's going on in the Boise real estate market right now. Um, but uh, in May, we surpassed, uh, Boise's median home price surpassed $600,000, which is astronomical, as you know, if, if you've been following my channel or if you've grown up here, you, you know that's an, a very large number. Uh, but things have changed. Uh, two years ago, the median home price was like 400 grand. So. I mean, like I said, things have changed, but things are changing again, and they are, they're always changing as we know. And you already know about the demand that's been coming here for years. I mean, honestly, this demand and this influx of people that's coming here has been going on for the last 20 years. But it's been on steroids for the last couple years. Like, literally, it's just been fire hose. So two years ago, I had, I think it was about three groups of buying clients that it took me uh, about six months to finally get them pending and get them accepted uh, agreements on the, the homes that they were purchasing. <clears throat> and because the reason for that was because we were making offers on homes and all of those homes had 20 to 60 offers on them and five to 10 of those offers were cash. So that was the market when the fire hose was turned on and this place was going crazy. And if you remember back, I also told you that the only thing that was gonna change the demand here or change our market here and change our pricing here was going to be if something external happened. So something globally or something uh, from the feds, which is exactly what has happened. So it's not news to you for me to tell you that the interest rates have literally doubled in the last two to three months. Um, everybody pretty much knows that that's in the housing market, following the housing market, listens to news, etc. So that's reality, that has happened. And it's doing exactly what the feds wanted it to do. It's slowing the economy and slowing down this fire hose of people that have been coming here for the last few years down to a steady trickle. But it is still a steady trickle. There are people still coming here, still moving, still paying cash or still financing and still paying those rates. So what happens when the demand slows down? Well, the high and overinflated prices from the peak real estate market, they have to come down. And that's exactly what's happening across the board, across Boise, and literally across the country. So now, like I told you, in May, median home prices exceeded $600,000, but in June, we actually saw them come down. So they came down to $592,000, and my expectation is you're gonna see them come down again in July. Uh, also, home sales were down uh, in June as well, down 16%, 
year over year over last year of the same month. So what's the market going to do? Well, it's going to continue to soften. It should continue to soften through the rest of the summer and you should start seeing these prices still kind of soften and come down. You won't see a collapse of the market at all by any means. That's not what I'm saying. But you will start see again, not start because they're already coming down, but you're going to continue to see the pricing starting to settle and, and uh, be a little bit more realistic, to be honest with you. And honestly, this is all positive news. Uh, our market's been running with extremely low inventory for several, several, several years, down to two weeks, down to one week of inventory, which is extremely low. A balanced market is six months worth of inventory. And if we were running at only a couple weeks of inventory, that shows you how unbalanced our market's been for a long time. So like I said, this is actually really good news um, for us real estate agents. I mean, a lot of agents don't take that as positive news because it slows down their business. But the agents on my team, because we understand things, we take this as a very positive thing. You want the, the market to, to soften and slow down a little bit, and you want it to balance back out um, because when it's such a, a, an accelerated seller's market, that's why we see these prices peaking up in these bidding wars and um, people just throwing up their hands and saying, forget it, I, I give up, I, I'm not gonna do this right now. People get frustrated during these times and, and it's, it's, we see it all the time. But like I said, it's necessary for a market to cool and come down. And this also really opens up the buying market, which is I've been honestly very busy right now. The market's supposed to be cooling down and calming down, but I've been busier right now because all of the buyers that have been wanting to buy, buy, wanting to buy, wanting to own a home, wanting to, to own this dream have been stuck and, and now they're actually able to buy and they're actually able to have choices and plenty of inventory to choose from. And they can go out and make an offer and like, well, if that's not the one for them, they can go to their, their second pick if they like. So um, it, it's honestly really healthy. It's good for our market for this to happen. Now, the problem though is the biggest mistake that consumers will make is again, not taking action or inaction, not getting in the market, thinking that they can time the market. The big problem with trying to time the market, especially as a consumer, is in the real estate world, the information that we work on and that we're using for everything and that even the information we supply to you, if you hear what I'm telling you and when these stats are coming from, our information is always backdated information. It's always the real estate market that we're telling you is always what happened 30 to 60 days ago. So by the time all of this information finally gets up to the uh, media outlets and you start seeing the headlines of, holy cow, Boise's a hot market, you're getting those headlines three to six months after Boise has already been a hot market. So you as a consumer trying to time this market and, and thinking, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for it to fall and then I'm gonna get in and, and it's gonna be great, et cetera, et cetera. Like, honestly, I, my biggest professional advice is get in the market. You're wasting your time by trying to time the market. I've got clients that were trying to do that three years ago, would not listen to me, said, oh, Sean, Sean I've got Google. I've got Google. I looked it up on the Google. I know much more than you as a real estate agent, and I know this is your career, but I've got Google, and I know this market is gonna crash at the end of this summer, and blah, blah, blah. I kept trying to tell him, said, listen, man, I." I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. And that client of mine, that's still a client of mine, uh, missed out on about 60% of, of market appreciation and value increase that he would have received and an equity that he would have received in that home and that investment if he would have done what I told him to do, which was to take action and not try to time the market. So he literally just called me last week and said, hey, Sean, I'm seeing prices are going down. I try to time the market, but..." I'm gonna kind of listen to you this time and actually jump in and take action. And I was like, all right, listen, this is what we're gonna do and this is when we're gonna do it. So we've got a good plan. But that's really the, the biggest advice I can give you is don't try to time the market, okay? If you wanna buy or sell real estate, buy or sell real estate. Buying and selling real estate never stops. It never stops here, it never shuts down. Even in winter, we're clipping along just like we do in spring. So I'm gonna give you my two cents on rate. Since the rate is gone up and everyone thinks the rate is through the roof and they don't wanna buy a home now. If your plan was to buy a home before the rates went up, you should continue your plans to buy a home as long as you can still afford the payment. 
I was 19 years old when I bought my first home and rates were 7% and they were just starting to fall under 7%. And at the time, that was a smoking good rate. And people were buying homes left and right at 7% and loving it. And, and like I said, it was a frenzy then too, just like it's been here. Buying my home was the best investment that I could have possibly made um, at 19 years old and seven years later when I sold it and I had a big old chunk of money in my bank account. And to me, like a big chunk of money was like, it was just under $25,000, but oh man, that was a lot of money to me at that time and at that age. Money I wouldn't have had if I was renting. So it's just bottom line, real estate is the most sound investment that you could possibly make over time. It's just, it's always been proven and it's always gonna be that way. Well, I, I'm not gonna say always. It should always be that way. Personally, I would buy a home all the way up to a 10% interest rate before I would even start getting concerned. But that's because I understand real estate, I understand the market, I understand the investment of it, and I understand how smart it is. Um, I would much, much prefer to pay a 10% interest rate on my own home that's 100% tax deductible than to rent and pay 100% interest, basically, right? Pay 100% interest that is not tax deductible. And then when I sell my home, my investment, a few years later, I'm gonna make more than likely a boatload of money that is also not gonna be taxed. So yeah, it makes sense to buy real estate and to own a home, and it does not make sense to rent. I don't care what the rates are. Like I said, as long as you can afford the payment, continue to get in the market. Also, so that you know, lenders are smart. They have workarounds for all of these things. My clients, my last three clients that I just helped own a home, uh, all three of them had rates that were under five. They were in the fours. Um, and that was because the, again, lenders have programs to get around, you know, what the feds are trying to do. There's uh, lenders have buy down programs that will buy your rate down. Also builders are doing a lot of that right now, where if you sign up for a build job or take on one of their homes that are being built right now, uh, then you can actually uh, use a program with a lender they have where they'll buy your interest rate down so that you'll still buy that home. And that's in fact exactly what uh, the lender and the builder are doing on one that I am closing tomorrow. Uh, is that's exactly what they did to help the help those people still be able to afford the payment even though the rates went up. My preferred local lender, um, he's offering a 10-year adjustable rate arm, uh, adjustable rate mortgage. So what that means is you'd have a fixed rate in the fours for the next 10 years, and at that point, it could adjust with the market. I don't know about you, but I have refinanced my home several times in the last 10 years. Thus, also, most people also do the same thing. So these are actually very smart things to be doing and using when people are concerned that the rates have you know, gone up to six or five or whatever, You know, it's not even six yet, but gone up to five and people are freaking out, well, there's still programs that you're gonna get in fours and that is phenomenal, phenomenal. All right, so let's go out and hit the lake. So if you don't already know, I live in Nampa. We use Lake Wool all the time because it is 10 to 15 minutes from my house. Uh, that's the lake of choice that we use 90% of the time. We do go over to Lucky Peak a little bit, uh, which is about 45 minutes, meh, 40 minutes from my house. Uh, but then our second lake of choice is actually Cascade Lake. Uh, we love boating there. That is our, our home away from home is Cascade. Uh, but we go there all the time. Unfortunately, this year we haven't been going to Cascade because if you're a boater or a lake goer, then you know that you do need to check things like the blue algae and um, you need to check uh, the website, the website that tells you um, the conditions of the lakes, uh, et cetera. Uh, our um, local news outlets are, and online especially, are really good about letting everybody know when there's a problem with the lake. Uh, fortunately, this year Lake Lowell hasn't had any problems with blue algae. That's the problem that we have around here. It's an algae and it blooms, and when it blooms, it creates toxicity in the water and makes the water unsafe to use. Most all the time when this happens, the water's still safe to use. It's in a really small contained area, but I'll be completely honest with you, um, 
being a, a parent, uh, the, the warnings are, you know, your kids can get sick, your pets can get sick if they drink the water. So being a parent and a dog owner and a cat owner, uh, we choose not to even go in the water. So unfortunately, Cascade early this year, they got the warning, uh, the blue algae warning. And so, like I said, we've just chosen to not go and play around in that lake this year. Uh, but fortunately, Lake Lowell's good. Uh, that's one thing that you always want to check. Make sure that you're aware of when you go and play in any lakes, uh, any bodies of water. You don't want to get sick. Uh, also, one thing I did want to mention before we run out there is that um, I wanted to give a smoke update. That's one of the things that I've talked about in a lot of my early videos was our air quality. And uh, the only thing that really affects our air quality is pollen it sometimes, but really it's just the smoke in summertime. Um, and this year so far, we're smoke-free. Uh, no, Oregon's not burning down, California's not burning down, so we're not getting all that smoke over here. So this year's been great. Hopefully we'll make it through the year and we won't have any problems. But I just wanted to give you that update because that is really important to a lot of people that are coming over here is uh, that might have respiratory issues is they, they actually really do have to know about air quality and things like that. Go figure, right? But anyway, hey, let's go out to the lake. It's like I've been telling you, not yet. <laughs> so it's like I've been telling you, if you're in love with Boise and the Treasure Valley and you want to move to Idaho and come experience some of this, all you have to do is call me, email me, text me, days, nights, weekends, myself, my team, we've got your back when it comes to moving to Boise and the Treasure Valley. Hit it! <laughs>